An important part of maintaining your CTB and Co database is looking after your receiving orders page. This is where you'll find your mailbox and all of your supplier invoices and credit notes ready for processing. If you send purchase orders from the system, you'll also see any pending purchase orders that are either waiting for delivery or for the supplier to send in their invoice. These act as a reminder for you so you know what you're waiting on and what to follow up on, so you could treat this page as your to-do list or in tray. Our recommended best practice is to check the process new stock items list daily each morning. This means that you can add any new stock items from your invoices in one step, rather than as you process invoices one by one. This can help to work through the stock items in a more consistent way by completing them all in one go and then moving on to approving the invoices that they relate to. By processing all of your new stock items together in one go, you can see that Invoice Ripper has collated all of the new stock items from across the various supplier invoices in the receiving orders page. Here you can see there are items from invoices that are new to the database. They don't exist in the current supplier stock lists, so before you can process the invoices they are listed on, they will need to be entered into the system. You will need to update the unit of measure so that the system knows the volume of stock included in the item. We know that one each box can't convert into grams or kilos, so we need to teach the system the volume of stock that this item accounts for. To do this, we enter in the quantity and the unit. For example, we can see that this item is a 10 kilogram bag. For fruit and veg stock items, we know that weights will always vary. So a weight taken from a previously weighed item will give us an approximate weight to use for that item when it comes in from a different supplier. Using this cabbage as an example, we can enter a weight of 2.7 kilograms for this item because that's the average or approximate weight for a whole cabbage weighed in the past. By entering in a scalable weight instead of leaving it as a whole unit, the system can calculate the cost if you use 100 grams or 10 kilos of it in a recipe card. It takes a little more work when you're entering in your stock items, but by following this method, everything can be scaled correctly so your costing can be as accurate as possible. Make sure you do this for all of your new stock items that come through the system to ensure that you have everything exactly how you want it. For example, fish is ordered by the kilo so the packaging type also needs to be by the kilo. The supplier invoices by the kilo as well, so the unit and the packaging type are the same. All that's left is to update the stock category details. You can have as many categories as you want to make sure that you're splitting your stock up into nice manageable chunks. When you're happy, save your changes. Sometimes suppliers will change their stock codes or descriptions, which will create new stock items when they are read by Invoice Ripper. If you see a stock item that you believe already exists within that supplier's stock list, for example, the Crayfish Tales Local, make sure you click the link button here. And then try and link this item to an existing stock item within the system. You can search by description or by the supplier's stock code to see if it's an existing item. In this case it is brand new. The item that is already listed for this supplier is the imported crayfish. While they may be used interchangeably, they are inherently different in terms of stock management, so wouldn't be linked to one another. Once any existing items have been linked, you can go ahead and click the plus button to add the stock items to your supplier stock lists. Best practice for managing the entry of new stock items is to restrict the number of users who are allowed to perform this task. This can be achieved with the user authorities and user profile settings in your database. You can allow users the permission to process invoices, but not add new stock items, so that you can maintain the integrity of your stock data for volume reporting and costing analysis.